Well, welcome to another session in our Women Lead webinar series brought to you by the Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas. I'll be your host today, and we are delighted to bring yet another informative webinar to our Association of Professional Women. Our Women Lead webinars are designed for you, the professional leader in business, whether you're an aspiring woman leader or a woman leading people, projects, a division, or a business. We select topics and themes that support your goal to lead, achieve, and succeed more effectively in business. Now, our webinar is just shy of one hour, and we welcome your questions. You can submit them via the chat window to me directly, and I'll answer them near the end of the show. Now, the focus of our webinar today is shattering the glass ceiling by negotiating effectively. And I am very excited to introduce our thought leader today, Kimberly Sintera. And Kimberly is a trailblazer in a male-dominated industry. She began her career in renewables over 25 years ago at Sea West Wind Power. In 2013, Kim founded Terra Pro Solutions to help fill the needs of the renewable market. She uses her risk management expertise for the development of utility scale energy projects. She has worked on many high value projects, including the Mount Signal Solar and Buffalo Gap projects. Kimberly has provided commentary for National Public Radio's Marketplace. She serves as a speaker and an educator at leading energy conferences, as well as being a cheerleader and an empowerment figure for women in business everywhere. So welcome, Kimberly. I'm very excited to have you on as my guest today. Thank you, Patty. I'm thrilled to be here. So, so let's begin and talk a little bit about negotiations and why negotiations are important. And I think why are we focusing on women in particular? And I think when you look at the statistics, there's a lot of compelling statistics out there on women and negotiations and the fact that we really don't negotiate. And it really affects us in a lot of aspects of our life. And when I say we don't negotiate, I, I think we certainly negotiate for others. You know, we're happy to advocate for others. But when it comes to negotiating for ourselves and really claiming what um, can, can help us and prosper us in our career, we're not so great at doing that. And one of the things that I like to share with people is, you know, where did I start? Why, why is this a passion for me? Because it's really a passion for me. And 10 years ago in February of 2009, I made the very difficult decision to leave a very long-term abusive marriage. And it was a decision that required a lot of um, research. You know, there's a process to go about leaving. Um, I had two sons at the time. One was uh, close to college age, and the other one was in uh, junior high. So in order to be able to leave, um, I followed the process that I was given. I left my ex-husband the note on Friday evening and spoke with my sons, and I said, you know, we're, we're leaving. And so what that meant is we packed up everything we could in six paper bags and we got into the, our cars, my son was driving, and we left our home. And it was a very significant time for me because I made the decision that in order to create the life that I wanted, I had to be willing to leave everything behind in order to have a new beginning. I like to share that story with women, especially when they see that I have a successful business now and that I'm doing all the things that I'm doing because I want women to know that the, the, this webinar and everything I share about negotiations is really the culmination of what I've learned um, over the last 10 years of basically creating a business and building a new life. And there's a lot of, I think, particular pieces, especially for women. So when we're looking at negotiations and we're talking about the real effects of negotiations, there's a lot of data out there. And 
uh, some of it comes from salary.com where they say 84% of prospective employers expect their um, uh, employees, new employees, to negotiate salaries. Mm -hmm. And only 46% of men negotiate, 30% of women negotiate. Wow. So what that ends up meaning is over the course of our careers as women, we're leaving the equivalent of about $2 million in earnings on the table that we're not able to take advantage of. Wow. But the paradox is, and, and this is also interesting, when you look at, you know, why aren't women negotiating, there is a real backlash out there uh, against women that negotiate. And there's women who negotiate their salaries, incoming salaries, are perceived to be not team players. They're perceived to be aggressive. They're, they're basically, you know, labeled with all of the gender references. You know, we still have these deeply ingrained gender, you know, um, barriers as far as negotiating. And it even affects the young women because what they found is women in the older age brackets, you know, we were raised to be good girls and we were raised to just do what we were told and be nice. But even the younger women coming in and the younger generations are finding, and even women on my team will say, you know, when I speak out and I'm more um, um, direct in my negotiating, I get, you know, I get a backlash from that. And it, it's very, so it's very common. So how do we work around that as negotiators? How do we, because we want to be able to succeed. We want to be able to claim, you know, the value that we feel like is, is due us for the work that we do, for the contributions that we make. So how do we set that up and how do we begin to create that? And, and a lot of it comes from what I like to call the three really important factors uh, in negotiations. First of all, you have to have a really solid foundation. Um, when I go back to, and I, I will touch on this a little bit, back to my decision, you know, 10 years ago, there was a real drive there for me. I, I knew where I wanted to go. I knew what was important to me. I had decided that having a more peaceful home and a stable environment was worth leaving everything behind. So understanding that and having that clarity, very important. The other thing that we're going to talk about is, is barriers. There's a lot of barriers out there. We touched on one, you know, that creates the paradox, the, the cultural barrier. But there's a lot of other barriers that women struggle with in this quest to be able to negotiate and be able to advocate for themselves. And then lastly, we're going to spend some time talking about solutions because that's really where a lot of this revolves, right? We want to know what are some real um, items that we can start to implement that can maybe change the way that we look at negotiations because a lot of, a lot of us are fearful of negotiations. Mm -hmm. We're a little intimidated, you know, but negotiations at the end of the day is about really three key points. It's about, um, it's a process and we're going to talk a little bit about that, but it's definitely a process. You know, I don't think you wake up one day and you're not a great negotiator. It's something that you work on over time. It's also about leverage and options. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then I think the best negotiations are about collaboration. It's about building a relationship. Most cases, that's what we're seeking to do. Mm -hmm. I always encourage everyone to look for the ahas. You know, look for something and, uh, that really resonates with you. Because again, thinking about negotiations is a process. You know, we're not going to all go out tomorrow and try to, you know, employ every single tactic. But I think if there's even one small change that you make, um, that, will, that will affect, you know, going forward, how you're perceived. I have one lady that I coach who uh, was working, had a millennial boss, and um, she had been, has been doing the work she's been doing for many years. She's very well respected. But this young man that came in to supervise her didn't understand what she did. And so for a long time, there's a lot of tension between them. And then she made just one small change. She decided to start 
communicating with him regularly about little achievements, little changes. She would share with him a report and say, well, oh, look what I found. I look at this. I, I'm really happy with this report and how it turned out. I'm really happy with this new conversation. And it was amazing how just that one small change, just communicating with him on a regular basis, completely changed his perception of her and her contribution in the workplace. So she had gone from having a very, her first very negative review to him coming back and saying, boy, Kathy is just really doing super. She's made so many great changes. She's really awesome. And so sometimes just a really small change can make a big difference. You know, Kimberly, I want to stop you for just a second because I was just struck by, um, you know, from, from the very beginning of what you've talked about so far, you know, sharing your personal story and kind of your why behind all of this, you know, to this story about a woman just changing her perspective slightly and how it really benefited her. And I, what I was struck by is that this is such an important topic and it's such an important thing to learn about and try to internalize before you need it even because we we don't necessarily get that second chance you know to do it again so you know learning about this um, I hope everybody who is participating in this webinar or listening to it later really gets those ahas that could change everything for them and be a, a tool in their toolkit for for when the opportunity presents itself I think that's that's wonderful, Patty. It's it's exactly right. I think we, I think again, coming back to women um, and and advocating for ourselves, we should always be prepared to talk about our value in a way that makes sense. And I like to when I share this in in a in a more of a, a, in a setting where I have other participants, we focus on the fact that really negotiations is about making someone else happy. It's if you can make the other party happy and get them what they want, then you're going to be able to get what you want. And so um, I, I think understanding that being prepared to talk um, about your value and being comfortable with your value. I mean, again, I don't know that we always take the time for that self-examination. And I was speaking to a lady recently who was trying to cobble together a resume after many, many years at a job that she was very happy with and she was laid off. And it was just, just really a shock for her. And she was really struggling because she was not prepared to yeah. look for a job. And all of a sudden, she's trying to put this resume together. And we were talking, and I said, you know what? I want you to put your resume aside and just go back and look at your career. And I challenged her to do something that I was challenged to do when I started my business, which was um, the person I was working with a coach at the time and they said Kim go back and make a list of all the projects that you've worked on and a single challenge that you encountered that you solved and that was I was like oh really you know that's going to be a lot of work but I <laughs> took the time to do it it ended up being about 13 or 14 pages because you know if you've had a long-term career you know you've done a lot of things that you can forget about so it was really a great foundation for me to think about my business and the value that I bring. I was like, wow, I forgot that I did all these things. So I encourage women, you know, right here, we're looking at back to the basics. Start with the basics. Start to think about yourself and your career. But I like to challenge women too to do it in a new way. You know, go back and really take a look at your career in terms of what you've encountered, what have you overcome strengths, weaknesses. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but really where this starts is with the, the basics. We talked a little about negotiations and best, you know, best price, best value, but negotiations is about creating leverage hmm. and leverage gives you power. And it's something that, again, as women, I feel like we have to get comfortable with that. Yeah. We still aren't comfortable being in that power seat. So starting small, getting comfortable with your value, understanding who you are, what you've done, I think really prepares you um, for those conversations. And it takes time. I mean, it's really taken me time, even in my business, to get more comfortable with the prospect um, of value. And 
again, one of the first things I had to do when I created my business was decide on how much I'm going to charge per hour. You know, how am I going to value my time? Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to have to be able to put that into an invoice and bill, you know, clients. And it was a really interesting prospect for me to think about myself in terms of, okay, what is my, what am I worth on an hourly basis? I don't think we really think about that. Right. I left. What I really wanted was to be able to create an environment where um, I had a more tranquil and peaceful life. So I think looking back at, at our mission and, and again, this idea of strengths and weaknesses, you know, we talk a little bit about uh, working with colleagues and I think trusted colleagues, mentors, um, to be able to help us understand, you know, what are our strengths and weaknesses? What do we bring to the table? Again, when I was creating my business, one of the things that really resonated with me that my coach talked about is, you know, Kim, you know so much more than you realize that, that you know. And it, it really struck me because I was so accustomed to just, you know, doing what I did that I didn't really realize the real value that was associated with that is such a good point, and, and um, I, I'm often thought about how we don't, if something is easy for us, like it's a, a, a talent that we have, we tend to minimize that and, and not see the value that we bring. That's right. Yeah, I think it's really important. And um, so, Again, looking at the vision, you know, this is one of our basics. When we're thinking about our mission, our vision, where is it that we want to get to? And I think when you're, when you're thinking about your vision, we need to think about, you know, what are you willing to do? What's important to you? Where are you in your life? And all these things, getting clarity around these foundational pieces are going to be very helpful later on as you're starting to look at opportunities, as you're starting to formulate your objectives, your alternatives for your negotiations, understanding, you know, what's important to you, what's non-negotiable. You know, I, I work with a lot of women who have young children and a lot of women who also um, have aging parents. And so their ability to be flexible, they're not able to relocate, their job schedules are a concern. So understanding all these different things and what's important is uh, really critical as, we, as we're looking at, later on we'll be looking at our objectives. And then values. You know, again, I think values, and, and you hear a lot about values today and companies and what they value. And I think part of this comes from the Me Too movement in terms of, you know, what do companies want to look like and what do they want to own in terms of the perception of who they are? And I think the same is true for us. When you're looking at your values and, and wanting to be in an environment of respect, uh, wanting to work with teams, wanting to work in a positive environment, these are all things that are really important to us. And when we're interviewing, we want to be clear on what our values are because it also helps us to frame our questions in terms of companies because companies are very dynamic today. There's a lot of different things going on, but I think it will also help us to know what's important so that we can ask those questions. And then lastly, we have objective. You know, we're, we want to understand what our objective is. Is it, you know, is it a promotion? Is it a raise? You know, um, is it maybe to start your own business? What is that objective? My, my personal mission that I've established is to be able to empower women with the knowledge to define their self-worth and value to create the life that they want. And that's what I've been able to put together over these past 10 years of everything that I've learned. So that's my passion and that's why I'm here. Because I think there's so many things and I've seen so many things that that we do as women where we underestimate ourselves. And um, I have women that are in jobs that where I know they could advance, but we just need to be thinking about things differently. So barriers, what are some of the barriers? And let's talk about that because this is really where the conversation starts. And when I have a group of ladies together, 
um, and I did this recently in San Francisco, it was interesting because the room was uh, filled with women college age all the way up to very far advanced in their, in their work life. And so what are some of the common barriers that women encounter? And I think one of the things that we struggle with is value, mm -hmm. defining our value, being comfortable with the idea of what we value and also our particular value and what does that look like. We make assumptions. You know, we assume that we know. Something happens, we assume that, that we know. And we don't always ask the right questions. And so we, we talk more about questions later on. But, you know, we don't want to make assumptions. I think it's important for women, and they're even finding with the statistics, that women that have, con that are able to consult with trusted colleagues, mentors, and I encourage women to talk to men and women because I think men bring a really important perspective for us especially in terms of the workplace. You know, men are conditioned from an early age to take risks yes. and yes. to be forward thinking and to be brave. And women are not, we're not conditioned that way. So I think um, understanding that, asking those questions, being able to, you know, get clarity around that is important. Boundaries, you know, for me, this is very interesting because I have one woman that I work with who uh, one Friday afternoon, she was the only one sitting in the office and all of her male counterparts were out playing golf and she was generating the reports. <laughs> and she looked around, she thought, uh, she looked around, she thought, okay, what's wrong with this picture? Why am I the one sitting here, you know, generating the reports? Interestingly, she was an older lady. So she's in that generation of women that are like, yep, I'll do it. You know, I'm, I'm the nice girl. Mm -hmm. But I think thinking about those boundaries and what is healthy for us, what, what works for us, yes. you know, and being able to feel comfortable articulating that, you know, and, and it's a challenge for us. You know, I think for myself, um, one of the, the barriers that I have is it's around this idea of boundaries and being raised, um, you know, in a time where you worked first and then you played and the way we even defined work was being able to produce something tangible, I guess. And without realizing the value that there is in all of those other things like uh, networking and spending time to build up your skills and, and all of those things that go into making you a, a more well-rounded and more um, successful business person, which I think is possibly something that men understand inherently. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm totally talking off the top of my head right here, but it seems to be something that as women, we have to convince ourselves that those things are just as valuable. Yeah, I think that's excellent, Patty. And, and you know, we have a tendency to take care of ourselves last. Yeah. Um, I started do some, doing something really interesting a few years ago, and um, I started taking some short vacations by myself, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe just over a weekend, a couple of days where it was just honestly all about me, and I got to set my own schedule, I got to go where I wanted to go. Um, not every woman has the advantage of being able to do that. My children are growing, so I don't you know, have those restrictions. But I do think there's a huge value to women creating that boundary of just that time alone. Yeah. You know, going out to dinner by yourself, taking that time. And it sounds like really indulgent, you know, really? Like I'm going to be able to take those four or five hours to myself. But it really has become empowering for me. Um, giving me a lot more comfort with, uh, and confidence being alone. I, I have one story that I really like to tell where I went to a conference and I was walking into, um, I had to go into the lunchroom, it was a buffet and it was a, you know, if you know these renewable conferences, like a lot of these conferences, it's all men in black and blue suits. And so there was a room filled with these tables with just all men. There was one or two tables that had a couple of women and a couple of guys sitting there. And so I thought, okay, Kim, which table are you gonna go sit at? Are you gonna go sit at the safe table? <laughs> Or are you going to go challenge yourself to find a seat at one of the tables with all the men? And I thought, I'm going to challenge myself. 
So I walked over to a table that was all men. And I said, oh, do you mind if I join you? And they said, yeah, sure, sit down. So I sat down and I ended up engaging in a really nice conversation. But it sound, might sound funny, but for me, that was a big step. It's like, okay, you know, what's my boundary going to be here? Do I challenge myself? Do I step outside of my comfort zone? Uh, moving on then some of the other barriers, you know, questions. I think questions are so important. And a lot of times maybe we're a little, we don't have the confidence or what have you, but I talk to a lot of women and I'll say, you know, they're, they're working at companies where there's a, they say there's a path for advancement, but they have no clarity around what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And I always say, well, is there someone you can talk to? Who can you go sit down and talk to and ask questions? You know, how can we ask questions? Um, in my business, questions are, are crucial. And I've even changed my sales presentation so that I ask questions at the beginning. You know, what's important to my clients? Where are they going? What are their objection, your objectives? You know, what are they focused on? Because it helps me to better frame my response. And I think the same is true as well. If you're thinking about advancing in, in your career, you know, understanding your value and asking those questions and being able to articulate that value and knowing where that value can be added, that's really what's going to get us moved ahead. Um, the other thing that I see a lot is, you know, as ladies, we take things personally. You know, we feel like, and I, I'm still guilty of this. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a little bit of a barrier for us just because, you know, again, if you look at the differences between men and women, we're a little, you know, we're a little fearful sometimes. Let me go back just a second. Okay. Patty, is there any way you can take me back a couple of... <laughs> is this where you want to go? Let me see. Yeah, I think so. I just, yeah, I think just the last two or the last few on the, on the list of barriers okay. were, you know, criticism, um, difficult to take criticism, but I think, again, criticism from in the right, under the right circumstances, talking to someone who's trusted that you trust can help you. And I think we talk a little about A+, plus. that's something we kind of joke with uh, around here at the office, but the idea that you know, as women, we're always the eight plus achievers. The way that I think about this is, you know, a man will look at the job, you know, application requirements and they'll say, oh, I have two of 10 things. I'm perfect for this job. And a woman will look at it and say, I've, I've only got eight of 10. You know, I'm not going to apply. I'm not, I'm not perfect. So I think, you know, we don't have to always be A+. Plus. And the last thing is self-confidence. You know, obviously we know self-confidence is important. Let's talk about solutions because I think that's really where the rubber hits the road in terms of negotiations and, and really what we want to get to. We talk about alternatives and really everything that we've done up to this point, looking at our foundation, looking at our barriers, what we're really building up to is alternatives and there's a phrase that's been coined for negotiations and it's called BATNA or best alternative to negotiated agreement and all this means is that when you go into a negotiation when you're preparing for a negotiation you've thought through what your alternatives are what are you willing to accept what you know you've got to have you know a certain salary you've got to have certain benefits um, what kinds of things are you willing to put on the table and what things are not negotiable for you? Alternatives of all the different factors in negotiations, that is the most crucial factor because uh, a person that is perceived as having the most alternatives is going to get the best outcome in those negotiations because your counterparty is going to perceive you as being more credible, and is going to perceive you as being more of a collaborator and the right person to be able to, to work with. So it's very important. 
So then we're going to talk about some tactics um, together with looking at some of the alternatives. And this is kind of where we can have a little bit of fun because honestly, we could spend the whole day talking about tactics. There's so many different tactics when you're negotiating. And it's interesting because as I did research when I was preparing for uh, this workshop and, and webinar, I, I was, didn't even realize that there were so many different nuances out there. So medium was probably one of the ones that was the most surprising to me. And what this is, is it's the difference between face-to-face -face negotiations and email negotiations. And interestingly enough, women succeed better in negotiations when they are face-to-face -face with their counterparty, where they can read body language, where they can collaborate, where they can um, adjust and, and communicate. Because I think women, that's our strength, is that's what we bring to the table. Men, on the other hand, have been found to respond more favorably and negotiate more quickly and um, reach resolution faster on email because there's a perception of uncertainty. And when you think about the different leverage points in negotiations, if you can create a little bit of uncertainty, it's the fact that, you know, you might lose this if you don't make a decision quickly, if you don't move out promptly there's a chance that this is all going to go away and so but men are found to respond more favorably to that so i like to mention it just because when you're thinking about your negotiations and you're thinking about you know how you want to set those up there might be cases where in lieu of sitting down with someone which i think a lot of women have a tendency to do to want to meet face to face you may want to think about doing something over email that is such a fascinating differentiator. I, I never thought about it that way that, you know, um, with men, leverage is sort of that uncertainty and with women, their leverage might be this in, intent to be um, authentic and transparent, whereas both have uh, their time and their place. Right, absolutely. And, you know, I, again, I, I happen to be a big proponent of meeting in person, but it is interesting that there are times when you might want to think about closing out that negotiation over email and who yeah. knew, right? Yeah. Great. Uh, the other thing that we look at is time and, and time can be in my business. Time is probably one of the most crucial negotiating pieces that we have because when we're negotiating the more time that we have the more money a lot of times we can save that's not always true in every in every circumstance time is important from a couple different standpoints first of all there's actual scientific research that shows that scheduling your negotiating discussions earlier in the day like in the morning give you more leverage gives you more power because you have a day, you know, to work through the issues, to talk about things. So time does matter. So when you're thinking about when you want to sit down with your supervisor or when you want to have that conversation with some party, it might be better to have it in the morning as opposed to, you know, three or four o'clock in the afternoon. The other thing that's important about time is time, again, is a very powerful negotiating tool. Understanding, for instance, if you want to apply for a promotion or you want to think about negotiating for that next level, when you have that discussion, the timing of that can be very important. When, when are budgets decided? You know, when are things allocated for certain departments? Um, that can be very important in terms of, you know, under coming back to asking questions. When's the best time to have this conversation? That time can be very important. For me and my business, you know, when we're negotiating certain leases and acquisition documentation, sometimes there's just not motivation, right? You can, you can be talking about things for weeks and months, and I'm sure those of us here have had those kinds of experiences. Being able to use time as leverage, creating some kind of a, of a, of a time deadline can be a very powerful negoti uh, negotiating tool. Research, I, I think it, it's, 
you know, it's probably intuitive, but again, coming back to this idea of making sure that we research and understand, you know, what are the most important pieces? When I'm working with clients, depending upon what jurisdiction that we're in, what area of the country that we're working in, let's, let's say, it makes a very big difference on how we're going to set up our negotiations. So understanding, researching, um, making sure that you know and you're prepared is very important. And logistics is, is interesting um, from a lot of standpoints. So, you know, we go back to this conversation of medium in-person versus email. Logistics, I think, is equally important because I feel like when you go and let's say you go sit in your supervisor's office to have a conversation, from a power standpoint, you know, the power is really where that person is. I mean, if you're sitting in your supervisor's office, it's kind of like, well, the power is kind of on their side is how I look at it. Mm -hmm. So how do you create a neutral setting, right? Maybe you go and sit and have coffee. Maybe you go to the lunchroom. Somehow you go outside of the office and you have that conversation because you create more of a neutral setting where you're really even, you know. Um, this is even important on when you think about making concessions and, and different things. And we don't spend so much time on that um, in this for this piece, but we do in other conversations. And logistics can be very important. Even down to something as simple as sitting around the table. You know, where do you sit? We talk about women. You know, when we sit at the table, we have a tendency to really confine ourselves mm -hmm. and just have a very small space. And it was like me when I walked into that room and I sat down at that table with those men. You know, we have to be willing to take the seat at the table. And we have to be willing to kind of spread ourselves out, you know, and take up a little bit more space. Because uh, the perception, again, is that you're more powerful as opposed to kind of being, you know, very confined and taking up a small space. Interesting, but... A, a lot of negotiations is psychological and you want to be able to create the power and the leverage on your side. And some of these things are very subtle, but we don't realize that um, a lot of these things are from a gender standpoint are very subtle. Science, we always talk about science and, and science can be great for bolstering your negotiation, you know, coming in with charts and graphs, being able, I think, too, as women, the studies are interesting where it comes to women negotiating for themselves versus women negotiating for others. And what they find is that if a woman is negotiating for herself, a lot of times she's penalized. But if she's negotiating for someone else or on someone else's behalf, then she's rewarded for that. So I think um, looking at the research, there's a lot of good websites out there that will tell you, you know, what's a fair salary for a certain position, being able to support what you're talking about. And again, kind of coming back to this idea of asking questions and making sure that you have the data because what they're finding, again, coming back to this idea of women being penalized for negotiation, if we can deflect the focus from it just being about us as women, and about helping the organization. This is about making you know, the company look good. This is about helping the company succeed their goals. This is about what I can bring to the table to make a compelling difference for the team. Then that's really what people are interested in hearing about. Um, anchoring is, is setting your pricing. And there's a concept in negotiations that says that when you put an offer on the table, when you put a figure on the table, you want to be sure about that number. If you're putting a sole figure, let's say, you're, you know, let's say you want an $80,000 salary, you want to be really sure about that because that is an anchoring piece. Someone is always going to come back to that number. So be sure, be clear about the number that you put on the table. They've actually found that using um, framing offers and using what they call bolstering pricing is more effective in terms of negotiations. So let's say you want an $80,000 salary. What they found is that if you will set your framing from 80 to 90,000, let's just say as an example, that you might have, you have a better chance of achieving 
your $80,000. So a lot of this is about um, how you structure and set up your, your negotiations. So we could spend a lot of time, there's a lot of different theories on how you set up pricing and how you set up your negotiations. And we could spend a lot of time talking about that. But just remember, the most important aspect is that that first number that you put on the table becomes the anchor. And that's the number that you're going to be negotiating from. So make sure that you're comfortable with that number. Yeah, that's a that's great input regardless of what it is you're negotiating. You know, salary, contracts, what have you. That's That's great input. Right. And so the last thing, um, one of the last things that I'd like to talk about is telling stories. You know, our resume and, and the things that we've done are, are only tools for us in negotiations. The real value, the real piece of negotiations is being able to articulate your value, your worth in terms of real true stories that people can relate to that they can understand. And there's nothing like understanding. And that's why when I created my project list early on, it was such a helpful tool for me because I was able to go back to those situations. And then when I would have conversations with prospective clients later, I was able to say, well, here, let me tell you, here's a situation where this is what I encountered and here's how I solved it. And you can walk people through that thought process. And that is very valuable, especially for women, because we assume that our supervisor knows what we do and is really focused on what we do. And honestly, our supervisor, whoever our counterparty is, and they're not. They're focused on their needs and what they want. So how can we articulate for them in an effective way how we think and the contribution that we can make? And, and one of the most compelling ways that we can do that is through telling stories. And it requires that we go back and, you know, do our research and be prepared. But I found it to be a very compelling tool. And then we talked about asking questions. I always come back to asking questions and making sure that, you know, we understand this is about the, the other party. And if you make it, I believe in win-win negotiations. Because we, in almost every aspect, in almost every negotiation, we're looking to create some kind of a relationship, whether it's for a job, whether it's for a new product, whether it's a, you know, some kind of contract or advancement for our company. That's really what we're looking to achieve is some kind of long-term, mutually beneficial relationship where we're each getting what we want. And so one of the most effective ways to do that is to make sure that we're asking questions and we're gauging where we are and are we really meeting the needs of the other person. So just some final thoughts, you know, again, really coming back to this idea of focusing on your anchor and in order, and your anchor is that number that you're going to put on the table. It's that value that you're going to, you know, ascribe to this negotiation or to your, to your job or whatever it might be. And going through this process of looking at your foundation, understanding your barriers, and then really doing that research to be able to put you know, understand and be able to um, put your anchor price on the table is really important. And ask for what you want. You know, this seems a, a little bit, again, intuitive, but uh, we don't always do that. And I think, you know, go ahead. When I walked into the room with all those men, I thought, gosh, you know, I don't know, is this going to be awkward? But I ended up sitting down and having a wonderful conversation. In fact, one of the men I sat next to for, works for a very large utility company. He recommended a fabulous book to me by Brene Brown that I really loved. And so it ended up being this great conversation. Um, when I was starting my business, I had the opportunity to take a job where I would have gone to work for a title company. And I would have created a renewable division for them. They wanted me to bring all my contacts and my many years of expertise and create this division and I started thinking after that I talked to them, I talked to them for quite some time. But at the end, I thought, you know, if I can do this for them, 
why can't I do it for myself? <laughs> so ask for what you want. You know, don't be afraid to, again, coming back to this idea of creating the life that you want. You know, ask for what you want. Uh, is I think really crucial. And, you know, maybe they say no, maybe they say come back and, you know, do this or make this change or whatever. But I think not being afraid to ask for what we want is so important. We talked about BATNA and really BATNA, all it means is alternatives. Know your alternatives, know what's important to you, know what you want to put on the table and be prepared to talk about those alternatives because that's what's going to create that leverage where people are going to look at you and, and they're going to want to negotiate with you because you're credible, because you are perceived to being someone that is, you know, has the power on your side. We're talking about power again. Negotiations is about leverage, is about creating power. And I think, again, as women, it's something that we have to get comfortable with. And it's definitely a process of getting comfortable with creating that power in a way that really derives from our value, you know, that we can really articulate and talk about, this is what I've done. This is what my contribution can be. And I, I love to tell the story um, of one of the women that I hired early on in my company. And uh, she had a marketing background, but she'd been a stay-at-home mom. And she was living in Texas left her husband, packed up the trailer with her four kids and drove from Texas to California. So it's, you know, two or three days, right? I mean, Texas, you can drive forever. <laughs> and so uh, my son came to me and because we were looking for a marketing person. My son came and said, you know, what if we give her a try? What if we give Vanessa a try? And I said, you know, love to do it. Let, let's do it. Because who doesn't want that woman, you know, working on their team, right? A woman that that's focused. And dedicate it. So, you know, again, thinking about these different pieces is very important. And, and again, it's a process. You know, we're not going to wake up tomorrow and be perfect negotiators. But just even one small change, just asking more questions, you know, select a mentor or um, a colleague in the company and start having coffee on a regular basis and start getting some feedback, asking questions, understanding, you know, when are budget reviews? If, if I want to advance to the next level, what does that look like? You know, um, very important because that will pro propel us to the next, the next level. Well, Kimberly, this has been Great. absolutely amazing. Um, I think this is such fabulous information. I, I do have a question here for you. Uh, what advice would you give to a woman that maybe feels like she didn't negotiate as, as well as she should have, say in, in a salary negotiation um, with her manager? And, and now it's a done deal. Like, what, what advice would you give to her? Right. Well, um, you know, if, if you've negotiated something and then it's crystallized, I think, you know, you, you're, you're always looking at the next level, right? I mean, most of us are thinking about advancement. Uh, I think the next step, is really to get that feedback and to understand, you know, um, your contribution. Um, it, and I guess I would need to understand, you know, if you're if you're unhappy with, you know, your salary negotiations, you know, what would be the rationale for that? Why why would you feel like, you know, it wasn't um, what you felt like it was worth? The other thing of it is, is we always have the opportunity for more negotiations, right? I mean, we should really, um, oh, like I mentioned, the lady in the resume um, who, have, you know, many years happy with her job, really didn't give any thought about what would the next life be. And honestly, I never did either. I never imagined I would have my own business. But I do think that we should be aware of our value. One, one of the things that I talk about when I give this to other ladies is many years ago, I was in the legal field. And we had something that we called a chronological file. And you put every piece of correspondence that went out the door into that file. So if you ever had to kind of make a quick reference to something, you could flip back through the pages 
and you could find a copy of the letter and put your hands on it. Well, of course, a lot of this has gone by the wayside and we don't necessarily um, keep paper files like we used to. But the idea of keeping a record of what you've done, I think is very important. So if you've closed out your deal, if you've negotiated, then I think you want to be paying attention to the contributions that you're making. Keep a file of accolades. We should know. Um, I remember when I used to write up my reviews, you know, a lot of times I think women wait and we think our supervisor is going to advocate for us. You know, they're, they're going to look at our, our review and they're going to know how fabulous we are. It's really not the case. It's our job to advocate for ourselves. It's our job to be able to detail and talk about that value. So that would be my advice. I think keep your eye on ways that you add value and be aware and be able to talk about that because I think that's how we advance and be having those conversations. You know, if you want to move to the next level, then we need to be having those conversations with different people in the company. I know I used to have coffee dates with um, the people that work for me. I would take them out and we'd, we'd go over and sit at Starbucks for an hour and we would just talk about what's going on. You know, how are you feeling about things? What do we, what can we do better? You know, um, those kinds of conversations are, I think are very powerful. Wow. Really good. Very, very good. Well, Kimberly, I just want to thank you again for being our, our special guest here today, um, for being our, such a great thought leader in this space. And um, on this slide, of course, we see all of your contact information. Is there anything um, in particular that you would like to bring to our listeners' attention? Any um, services that you might be providing or things that you may have coming up? Yes, thank you. I am working. I, I gave the, um, the longer version of this negotiations uh, workshop up in San Francisco, and we are planning on uh, scheduling a similar one for San Diego. And as wonderful as the webinars are, um, getting sitting in a room with women of all different ages and walking through all these different pieces, and there's a lot of interaction that we have. There's a lot of, uh, we do things in small groups. Uh, we work one-on-one. -on -one, we go through mock negotiations. We really get to practice a lot of what we're talking about here. And the power in the room was so great from hearing all these women and just all the ahas. And it was great, um, the variety. And so um, I would encourage women, if they're interested in getting more information on that webinar or on that um, conference, to go on to www.terraprosolutions.com. And that's a www.terraprosolutions, terraprosolutions.com. And there's a place where you can register, and we'll make sure you get the information when that date gets scheduled. Great. Well, thank you again so much. I really appreciate having you on uh, today on the show. And to all of our attendees today, thank you for joining us as well. And we'll be back again soon with our next Women Lead webinar series on how you can lead, achieve, and succeed as a female leader in business. Thank you so much for joining us.